All right, I'm gonna talk about a very effective and highly simple control design technique, a so-called pole placement. All right, so you model the system, a robot or whatever you are modeling, and you get a transfer function. First, you get the ordinary differential equation, then you go to the Laplace domain, and you find the transfer function, and it has some numerator and denominator, okay? And you would, you would like to close the loop to control, to achieve some level of uh, desired system performance and settling them. And you need to determine the controller transfer function. For pole placement at the beginning, let's assume, you know, of course, you may have a numerator and a denominator in terms of a polynomial, and you don't know how to choose NC and DC. Pole placement will help you in a simple way to choose your controller. How? First of all, let's close the loop. This represents the closed loop, this closed loop system. You have G, G, C divided by 1 plus G, C, G, G, C. Now, inserting the plant uh, numerator and denominator and the controller to be determined, you have this. And basically, you can simplify this in this form. You have this closed loop numerator and closed loop denominator, D, D, G, and NC. So pole placement goes like this. First of all, determine a desired closed loop denominator, gamma of S. And then choose DC and NC accordingly to match your close up denominator with this polynomial gamma of s so with pole placement your aim you want this to be gamma of s so that you know since you are going to choose gamma of s by properly choosing dc and and, and c you are matching you are going to have gamma of s as your closed loop denominator so you are going to do matching now, I have two examples to illustrate this. In the first example, let's have this open loop unstable system, 1 divided by s minus 2. I am going to write this equation to the top. <coughs> gamma of s equals to s minus 2 dc of s and 1 and c of s. Now, let's say you would like to have a smooth closed loop system transient performance, meaning no oscillations, and you would like to have, you would like to converge um, to a given command in one second. So, if you want to converge to a given command in one second, you would like to have your closed loop pole at four because TC is 4 divided by your closed loop pole, which will give you 1 seconds of convergence time. If your aim is to stabilize simply this system, you can choose this, any pole that remains on the left half plane of the complex plane. So, I am going to choose it as this. This is also choosing gamma as the first order, also motivated by the fact that the here, right-hand side, looking like first order. So now, if you simply select DC to be 1 and NC to be 6, you are going to get S minus 2 plus 6, so you are going to get S plus 4. We do the match. In this case, your controller simply becomes 6 proportional controller and your closed loop system transfer function becomes 6 divided by s plus 4. Now if you would like to analyze steady state behavior you can do so basically y infinity equals to limit s s going to 0 this is coming from final value theorem multiplied by um, C of S multiplied by closed loop system transfer function S plus 4. So this is R basically, right? This is R 
y of s, y equals the disclosed system transfer function multiplied by c of s. Let's say you would like to track ct equals to 1, and in Laplace domain, cs becomes 1 over s. So if you insert 1 over s here, this will cancel out with this, this s will go to 0, and you are going to get 6 over 4, or 3 over 2. So if you apply a command 1, your closed-loop system will go to 1.5. In order, if you want to track the command perfectly, you can simply add a correction term here, let's say phi, and for this example, uh, first before that, if you add phi here, pole placement process won't change, you are going to have phi here, phi here, and phi here, right? Your pole placement deals with the denominator and this phi correction term comes to the numerator, nothing will change. Now, if we write now, basically this closed loop system, phi will come up to be here. In the fi final value theorem, phi come up to be here. And basically, let me erase this. This will be appearing in here. So if you choose phi to be 4 over 6, you are going to get 1. So you apply c of t 1, and y will approach to 1. Basically, perfect command following performance. So let me erase this. You can always go back in the video to find this. So basically, time, this is the applied command, C of t equals to one, and this is the output performance. You, it is going to converge. This is y of t. It is going to converge to this command in one second because your closed loop pole is located at minus four. All right. This was the first example. Now in the second example, um, we are looking at g of s, which is s plus 1 divided by s minus 3, s plus 1. Once again, open loop, unstable. We are going to do the matching. I am going to use this equation, gamma equals to denominator and numerator of the plant, and the denominator and uh, numerator of the controller to be determined. Now, if you put things here, you have gamma of s equals to s minus 3, s plus 1, multiplied by dc of s, s plus 1, and c of s. Now, in this case, right-hand side looking like um, second order, of course, you know, for example, you know, if you choose it to be s plus a, it will look like third order, then here I need to choose a third order uh, pole, poles, so three set of poles, but I would like to go with the minimal control architecture, meaning that least order as possible. So looking at here, I cannot directly say, like the first example, how I should choose DC and NC. So I am going to give some free parameters. I am going to say, let's say this is phi1. Now, to have some design flexibility, I am going to choose NC as phi2 multiplied by S plus phi3. And here, I would like to have two poles located at S plus 4. So it's plus 4 to the power of 2. So here, actually, you can choose any pole that is on the left half plane. You can repeat the same example, like, for example, choose S plus 1 multiplied by S plus 3 choose some second order, you know, s to the power of 2 plus 2 zeta omega and s plus omega to the power of 2, having some damping and natural frequency. You can do so, nothing will change. This is up to you. This is basically based on design requirements. I would like to choose it. Both poles in this example, once again, at minus 4 because it will give me 4 divided by location of these poles, one second. 
if you, for example, choose it minus two, four divided by absolute value of minus two, close up system will converge in two seconds, four divided by two. So in this video, to be generic, let's have unity settling time. So that's why I'm choosing poles to be at minus four, so that I will have one second convergence time. Since these poles are real, I am going to have a smooth convergence without oscillations. All right, to make the long story short, once you insert phi1 here and phi2 s plus phi3 here and expand this equation, from the desired polynomial, you are going to get this. And from the right hand side, you are going to get this once you expand. Now we do the match. First of all, this coefficient is 1. I am starting with the highest order as to the power of 2 and matching. So P1 must be 1 here. Now I am moving to the second terms that multiplies S. We have 8 here and we have... So 8 must be equal to P2 minus... What I mean by P is... My, I apologize. This is phi1, phi2, phi, phi, and phi. When I write in MATLAB, I, saw, I made MATLAB to solve them, so I wrote like P. Um, all right, now we are going perfect. So now 8 must be equal to phi2 minus 2 phi1. Basically, phi1 was 1, we find it here. So 8 must be equal to phi2 minus 2. So phi2 becomes 10. And now moving forward, 16 must be equal to this term. And now you know phi2, you know phi1. If you solve this, you are going to get phi3 to be 1.9. So we got phi1 to be 1, and phi2 to be 10, and phi3 to be uh, 1.9. So in this case, your um, numerator becomes this, denominator, denominator becomes phi1 dc, which is 1. So you have this controller to control this system. Now in this case, we converge to a PD compensator. So now, basically, if you close the loop, your closed loop system will look like 10 s plus 1.9 s plus 1 divided by s plus 4 to the power of 2. So we made the closed loop system's denominator as desired polynomial gamma of s that we choose. Now, let me erase some stuff. The first example. Now, if, if you are designing a if you are dealing with a stabilization problem like suppressing the vibrations, then you are not applying any command, then you can use this controller to suppress the vibrations. For example, right, let's say your initial condition is here and C of T is zero. Starting from that system, this is T, this is Y of T, this is one second your controller will make your you know closed loop system to converge to zero in one second since you have s plus four to the power of two however if you are dealing with a command following problem if you would like to follow c of t let's say again one or in laplace domain c of s one over s then you also need to choose this phi first let's apply final value theorem y of infinity equals to limit s s zero multiplied by y of s which is limit s s going to zero g c l of s multiplied by c of s c of s is one over s this will cancel out with this term so we are looking at limit s going to zero i am now going to insert this closed loop system 10 s plus 1.9 s plus 1 divided by s plus 4 to the power of 2 now making s going to 0 this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 so you have 19 over 16 if you are not using if your fee is 1 
If your fee is not one, but you are using like this, then your closed loop system will have this fee right in here. And it will also pop up here. So here, if you choose fee to be 16 over 19, then this will become one. So you're applying one, you're, you are going to converge to this output, output will converge this comment in uh, perfectly. So similar to the previous plot, time, this is the comment one, C of T, your output will converge to this comment in one second. A simple way to do comment following by adding a correction signal that multiplies um, the comment. So this is basically a feed forward approach. So feed forward approach may not be super robust to the changes in the plant dynamics. So you may want to tune it from time to time. A better approach would be um, PI compensator, or, or in this case, since we have a PD compensator here, combining with a PI compensator, adding an uh, integrator term, which is basically, right, one over S plus, um, adding the integral I of S, uh, PI compensator, um, looking like in this case, I'm out of space, but GC of S equals to 10 S plus 1.9 S plus A divided by S type of a term. And you can go to, you know, you can either, you know, uh, simulation wise, choose this A or go to root locus, choose it in a more meaningful way. So this will basically also without this correction term or when this correction term is one, I think the integral part will help you to eliminate the steady state error and it will be more robust to changes in the plant dynamics. But if you want a simple solution that I, I also use this in experiments, you know, when I know the model uh, well, it works. So again, the main purpose of this video is pole placement. To wrap up, you have some uh, given a plant, you are going to choose GC such that, and you are also going to choose the desired closed loop denominator, and you are going to match the this cl actual closed loop denominator with the desired one, find your controller parameters, and down with it. All right, thanks.